hood out here. Like a little rain. You know what I'm saying? It's the Titans versus Bills. Two hard nosed teams going at it on an NFL Sunday. You don't get no better than that. We lock the gate. We yeah. lock the door. It can't nobody escape until we want them to escape. That was executed as well as you could do it. This has just been a war. A football war. Glad to have you with us on this Tuesday evening for the Mike Vrabel Show with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. We're glad you're joining us as we talk Titans football tonight. Titans fall to the Bills on Sunday by a final score of 14 to 7. And coach, when you led us through the week, when we had our production meeting, when you did everything for this show and for other shows, you laid out exactly what kind of game this would be. It was that predictable, and unfortunately for the Titans, just not enough plays to pull you through in the ball game. Sure, not enough in the end. Uh, didn't do a good enough job uh, coaching or playing. You know, we we did do some things well. You know, we we punted the ball well, taken taken away. Uh, Roberts was a huge key on special teams. Uh, we did that uh, through our coverage units and also obviously from our punting. When you talk about offense. We weren't able to fight through the fringe. We weren't able to stay on track and then therefore not able to score enough points down there in the red zone. Um, defensively, I felt like we stopped the run up until uh, that four minute period at the end of the game where we knew they had to run and they knew they were gonna run. Um, and, and that's where we gave up the bulk of our rushing yardage. And uh, we talked about the red zone, that they didn't get down there much, but when they did, um, they were successful. And that really carried over um, to the other day. As we take a look at the six-pack, Mike Vrabel's six-pack from Sunday's game, we see the only touchdown of the first half to begin. It came at the end of a 60-yard drive, and the bottom line is the Bills owned field position and took advantage of it with this touchdown. Well, I just got to keep your eyes on your man, you know, and that's that's really what it comes down to. They're down there first and ten, and you know they play fake it, uh, slip the uh, slip the big tight end out, Lee Smith there, and. And we lost, uh, we lost our eyes and we lost our man. Smith's second <clears throat> catch of the year, his first for a touchdown. Bills would lead seven to nothing at halftime, but the Titans did have a couple of outstanding individual efforts in the first half. One came from Corey Davis with a nice effort on a completion where Marcus Mariota actually was roughed. Well, we got into the drive. This was a two minute drive. They were getting the ball at the second half and we said, hey, we got to go down there find a way to score points and not give them any time to do anything with the football. This is one of those plays. We got into the drive with some good plays. One of this uh, with here, Corey breaking a tackle, Marcus standing in there, uh, taking the hit uh, to the to the knee there. But th we, we have to do more. We have to have more of these plays. We have to string more positive plays together. Seven nothing in the third quarter and the Titans defense gets the team going with an outstanding team play to create a takeaway. Yeah, I've talked about it at halftime. If we're able to get a turnover, if we can somehow create a turnover, force a turnover, that I'm confident and we're confident that our offense is going to go in there and score. You saw Reggie get into the pocket, Jarrell come back around, force him out. Um, here comes Harold with his hand up, which we've been coaching, trying to get done. He, lightly tips the ball there and Kevin's able to come up with a huge interception and right. the, the big thing there is he didn't rough the passer like they're waiting for you to rough him right there nice job by Byard making the catch setting up what turns out to be the Titans only touchdown of the day after Marcus Mariota's touchdown run is wiped out by review Derrick Henry finishes the drive yeah you get down there it's gritty you know what I mean you see Phillips jumping again uh, but again that's I you got know, third and half a yard to go um, it's, it's tough sledding down there, but big fella is able to create his own hole there and, and get across the end zone. Titans are trying to take the lead for the first time in the game early in the fourth quarter. Marcus Mariota throws an apparent touchdown pass, but unfortunately it's wiped off. Well, this is, you know, one thing we love about Marcus is ability to extend plays, uh, keeps his eyes downfield. And, uh, you know, unfortunately that's just what they saw. And when it's that close, we have to continue to do things that don't put it in their hands. And whether that's with penalties um, or close plays, uh, we have to do everything we can do as players and coaches to not let them decide it. 
Nice job, however, by A.J. Brown finding a way to free himself on that play. Sure. You know, I mean, he saw Marcus. He's a big target. Um, you know, sometimes when the quarterback starts scrambling, everybody takes off that way. A.J. throttled down and, and was able to, um, to give Marcus, Marcus an outlet. And this ends up being the game winner, the drive for the Buffalo Bills. Second touchdown pass for Allen as he throws it to Duke Williams, just called up from the practice squad, and Buffalo gets the points that give them the victory. Yeah, third and three. You know, they got the big tight end in there, so, you know, you can maybe get a run. And, you know, they play play action passes. Um, and, again, you know, you got to keep your eyes on your man. They go in there, fake a crack, and, and slip them out. So, you know, we have to be better down there. We have to be much better down there in the red zone defensively. When the Mike Vrabel Show returns, we've got the Bridgestone Clutch performance of the game and the Geico Gladiator of the game. Stay with us. More coming up. The Mike Vrabel Show continues. Time for the Bridgestone Clutch performance of the game. Second and 10 late in the third quarter. Titans at their own 22. A beautiful screen pass, Mike Vrabel. It was well executed. You know, John U, uh sells it, makes a great catch. And you could see the big fella uh, getting out there in the open field. Uh, we, we just got to continue to finish longer than the guy with the ball. And, uh, and hopefully great things will happen. But that's... Um, that's something we have to be able to do is we got to get Johnny the ball um, and allow him to run. He's got great speed, and uh, you can see that was a well-designed and then obviously well-executed play by, by the entire offense. It takes all 11 um, to get that play going. 57 yards for the young tight end, Jadu Smith, our Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game. As we move to our gladiator of the game, brought to you by Geico, we're going to visit with Rashawn Evans. Wow. Guy, guy who had 10 tackles in the ball game, continues to make things happen. He does, and I think that this is a fitting uh, description because he does, he does, he plays like a gladiator. I mean, he plays hard, he throws his body around, um, and he continues to improve. And I'm excited um, every day that I get the opportunity to coach him, to work with him. Because um, each, each week you see him doing something a little better um, or fixing something that maybe came up the week before. And so um, really just excited about where he's headed. Let's hear from number 54, Rashawn Evans, linebacker from Alabama in this week's Geico Gladiator of the Game. Tuesday is the day off for Titans players. Rashawn Evans, it is not a total day off for a lot of NFL players, what is your Tuesday like? I would say mine would just be a regular, just getting up in the morning, cooking me some some good breakfast, scrambling scrambling a couple of eggs, getting some some waffles going on the on the on the little thing. And, you know, after that show, I'm really just probably getting some treatment here. Um, and then right after that, man, really just relaxing, maybe catching a movie on Netflix and you know, that's probably my day. So you do try to get away from football just a little bit, but not totally. You know, I always had a motto of too much of anything is, it can be bad for you. So I try to, you know, balance those things out. So when I do come back into these doors, you know, I'm, I'm fresh and I'm ready to go. Ten tackles in the game against Buffalo. Disappointing loss. How hard is it to get over it? You know, a loss is, is something that hurts. But at the same time, you really want something like that not to linger on during the week. You know, you kind of have to have short-term memory and be able to, you know, kind of put that to a side and really look at the things that you've been doing good at and continue to do those things. And the things that you've been bad at, you know, try to diminish those things so that when you go into this next week, you know, you're playing a lot better. Where has Rashawn Evans improved the most in year two? Just every, every bit of my game, whether it's, you know, me being a better leader, me being able to read, run plays, be able to, you know, recognize formations, in the office, I feel like just the fact that I'm more comfortable, you know, having that one year up under my belt, I just have a whole, just understanding how to, you know, really, really get my whole routine down on how to approach a game. The opponent this week, the Denver Broncos, love to run the football. They, they love to run it with Philip Lindsay and with Royce Freeman, and they're coming downhill. Is this a game for a linebacker that you embrace the challenge? Oh, no doubt. I mean, I want as many run plays as I can get. Um, that's. I mean, that's probably my favorite part of the game. And, you know, the, the opportunity that we're facing now as a defense, another challenge, another good offense that can, 
you know, you know, spread it out and make plays and, you know, for us to go out and have a really have our backs against the wall type mentality going going away, going into a different climate as well. Um, you know, it's another challenge that we're looking forward to. Rashawn Evans, great stuff. Thanks for the time. Normally, Amy Wells does our gladiator of the game interviews, but this week, Amy gives us something different, an incredible inside look at how the Tennessee Titans travel as a team. It's next, and you don't want to miss it when the Mike Vrabel Show returns. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Brent Akers has been with the Tennessee Titans for over 20 years and has now risen to the post of Director of Team Operations. One of the areas that Brent is in charge of, team travel. It takes a special talent to coordinate team travel, but Brent would tell you that team travel is less about him and more about his team of people. Amy Wells traveled with the Titans operations team on a recent road trip to give you an inside look at how these guys move the Titans for road games. And Amy learned that it all starts in Brent Aker's office. Titans. Okay. Hi, Titans. I'm Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Susan. Hello. Any good team knows the importance of a good plan. For the Tennessee Titans, the game plan is the key to success both on the field and off. The vision of what coach wants done is really the most important thing. That means tending to every need, both big and small. We'll have a call with the bus company. We got buses here, we got buses in Nashville. They'll have to reposition everything because one, two, two three, stairs. Three, they go on L2 and L4. Who's letting who in gates? What kind of food's on the plane? who's servicing it? Where that aircraft is coming from? Where that aircraft is right now? Room numbers and how many people and what we need in each Food space. Food has to be on call, ready to go. Overnight oats, vegan pancakes. So it's every piece that's going to touch the team. We're working through the whole plan for the season. It's not just one game. It never stops. Madness never stops. For Chris Matusek and Max Curtis, the key is having a great team. Led by Brent Akers and anchored by Luke Morrow, this team of four operates like a well-oiled machine. If we didn't have good relationships, I think it would be extremely difficult. It has to be a department that works together. It's just making sure we communicate with each other. So whether that's tagging everyone on an email, you get random texts, and just make sure you're sharing all that because there's always changes going on. Chris goes to the airport early, meets the bus company, and gets all that stage while I'm here at the hotel to make sure that when the team gets here, they get off the bus, walk in, and they have their room key there. And sometimes it changes an hour before the team shows up. And so just kind of staying on top of that as much as possible. We're finalizing some of those details. As soon as I get that, I'll get it to you. For the Titans operations crew, the devil is in the details. So when faced with arranging the travel for an entire football team for an entire season, the planning starts early. Six months before the first game of the season, the ops team hits the road. So you'll go do a site visit. Brent does most of ours. He'll go out in site, go to anywhere from two to 10 hotels, depending on what's going on, how frequent we've been in the city. Properties change, people change. So it's great to go in the city at that point in time when there's not a lot of pressure, just to build a relationship. Those relationships are the secret to the Ops Crew playbook. Building a relationship with the people in this city is huge. Same way with them, same way with the police officers, people in the hotel. If we need something and we need help, that's the only people we know. And they're the, the who got to make it work for us. The way our department works, it's everything to us. I need to know I can walk into that mill room and if something goes on or if coach needs something, I can call Mike, hey, brother, I need this. And, and here it comes. Or the bus company, we got to make an extra stop or we got to go somewhere else. It's just those relationships. And that's the only way you can do this job. The ultimate goal for this crew is simple. Limit distractions, respect the routine, don't mess with the superstitions. And our job, right, is to make sure that the things that the players, coaches, personnel, staff, ownership don't have to worry about so they're able to do their job or the things that we try to minimize the mistakes. And that starts on the airplane. So, I mean, there's pre-departure meals at the airplane. There's, there's food on board the airplane for the team. You know, we're very superstitious kind of in what we do, just to make sure we have the exact same thing at every single meal, every single time, in every single city. Accommodating the needs of approximately 155 Titans players, coaches, and support staff is a tall order. But this team of four is up for the challenge you learn how to fix problems along the way. Chris has done it for 15, 20 years. Brent's done it for almost 25 now. I think it's just the willingness to do whatever it takes, like wake up at 
four o'clock in the morning to meet a truck with equipment coming from Nashville to make sure that it gets the right place, whatever it takes to help the team to end up winning a football game. You get obsessed with it. It's just who you are, what you do. You know, it's just something that you get entwined with being with the team. You go back and tell your kid self that you work for the Tennessee Titans and he's fired up. The Titans operations team. They're, those guys are fantastic. I mean, you don't even notice them because nothing goes wrong. You know what I mean? It's just like they're all locked in. Uh, Brent, Chris, Maxie, Luke, um, anything that any player or coach or any anyone on the trip or anybody here in our day-to-day, -day, um, you know, just work environment needs something. These guys are there. It's never let me see. It's always we'll make it work. And uh, I, I appreciate them. I know the organization appreciate, appreciates them. The team appreciates them. Good guys. Proud great, of them. And great proud, guys. Yeah, proud to have them as part of our team. <clears throat> now time for our Delta Dental of Tennessee team oh, to join in with the Guess the Titan feature. I, Mike Vrabel I, gets a look at this. It's like two hours old. That baby's like two hours old. Yes. I know who that is. You th he thinks he knows who it is. I know who that is. All right. Well, don't say yet. Don't say. I won't. We need to go to break. And then we're back to see if Coach really knows. He's one for three on the season. Are you two for three? Two for three. <laughs> The Tennessee Titans have never scored 50 points in a game, but they have scored the unusual number of 47 four times, and they scored 48 once. That happened on Monday Night Football, an October Monday night in Green Bay in the otherwise forgettable season of 2004. The Titans got two first quarter touchdown runs from Chris Brown on a night that saw Brown rush for 148 yards. Steve McNair threw two touchdown passes. Overall, the Titans totaled 456 yards of offense. And the Titans defense, brilliant. Six total takeaways, including three interceptions of Brett Favre. Those in attendance at Lambeau Field were in shock as the Titans blasted the Packers 48 to 27. The entire football world watches as the Titans score the most points during their time in Tennessee. Delta Dental of Tennessee brings Can You Guess This Titan to Mike Vrabel on the Mike Vrabel Show. It's his show, so he gets to guess. Probably the easiest one we've had thus far, but that is Jarrell Casey. Jarrell Casey. Is it Jarrell Casey? Close. Plays right next uh, to him. It's his younger brother, Daquan <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Daquan Jones coming off a, another good ball game right. for the Titans. Yeah, he is, um, you know, just – very consistent you know he was the coach's choice for for captain uh this past week he got a lot of i don't want to say a lot but he got numerous votes uh to be a team captain this year uh, and wanted to recognize him as a captain this past week continues to play physical plays hard uh, and does a, a great job of impacting the game inside daquan jones credited with three tackles and a quarterback sack in this past sunday's game when the Mike Vrabel Show returns, it's time for the coach's keys to success in the Mile High City. Stay tuned for that. Broncos the opponent. We're headed to Denver to play them. Time for Mike Vrabel's keys to success. These guys like to run the football. So what do you got to do? You got to stop the run. Yeah, you got to stop the run. You really do. They got two-headed monster, Lindsey Freeman. Uh, they're averaging 25 carries a game combined. Uh, they both have a very unique skill set, uh, but they're also throwing it to them uh, eight other times. So these, these guys are going to count for 33 touches on average. Be important that we stop them and know where they're at. All right, so the other thing for the Titans is they've got to handle what is always a wild, almost college-like environment in Denver. Well, it is. I mean, they've got uh, got a loud fan base out there, um, you know, mile high. You got the you got the air, all that good stuff. But they're loud. You know, we're gonna have to go out there, and what you do is, you if you're able to sustain plays and pick up third downs, um, you know, that that gets a little quieter. So, you know, we we've done. Um, at times a good job on, on the road, and so that'll have to continue this, this week. I want you to explain the third point. You say stay on track. What do you mean? We have to continue to 
sustain positive plays. We can't have a play for seven yards and then an incompletion or a play for seven yards and a sack or a tackle for loss. You know, we have to continue to gain efficient yardage, um, sus- you know, continuously. And uh, what, when we did that in the game, we moved the football down in the red zone. And when we didn't, um, obviously we ended up punting. You know, it just, it's too hard to pick up third and nines and tens. And so if we can stay on track, be efficient, um, in consecutive plays, we have a much better chance to move the football. We're on the air at 2.30 from Empower Field at Mile High. We hope you'll join us on Titans Radio. For Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says, good night, everybody.